Hi everyone, it's Andrew from AMD Tech and today we have a review of the Surface 3 with LTE built in. It's the AT&T variant along with the Surface Type cover which is a must-have accessory. If you're going to use the Surface 3 you must get the Surface cover, Type cover which is an extra I believe it's 129 retail. I'll throw the link down below where you can purchase these um, products. Uh, also another optional accessory is a Surface Pen it's the same pen used on the Surface Pro 3. Different than the pen on the Surface Pro 4, but I think they're both compatible with each other. You just won't get the added benefit of the Surface Pro 4 extra pressure sensitivity on that pen. Overall, um, I believe this is a great system on the go if you want to be mobile and still have access to internet. The built-in LTE is a very good option if that's what you're looking for. The keyboard, again, as I said, is a must-have accessory. It's got great key travel for a portable keyboard. It snaps on to the surface uh, via a magnetic latch, as I'll show you in a second. It's backlit the keyboard, and it's a much improved keyboard over the previous generation's uh, surf Surface-type keyboard. One of the things that the Surface 3 over its predecessor, the Surface 2, and then before that, the Surface RT, is performance. And the, the gain you'll see is in the Atom processor that they decided to use. This is the X7 processor, although it's no speed demon. It really is a very good balance between performance and battery life. Next, I'd like to check out the Surface keyboard. As you can see, the Surface Type keyboard uh, is it is backlit it is nice key travel it's got a nice feel to it I like the fact the keys are I think decently spaced out together it's a little again due to the size of the device it's a 10.8 inch screen so I think you have to make certain compromises when you design such a device and then the keys itself have a good feel to them now one thing I don't like about this keyboard is the trackpad Again, not terrible, and again, better from the previous iterations, from the Surface 2 and the Surface RT, RT, which was a terrible device. But again, not great, but not terrible either. But again, overall, yeah, does it get the job done? Yes. So I find myself using the touch screen or using the pen more often to click, um, you know, where you want to navigate to on the screen but does do I like the the trackpad I find it's a little too small it has a nice smooth surface I think it might be, I think they say it might even be glass I'm not sure but again overall use it gets the job done would I say it's great no but uh, is it adequate yeah probably overall good keyboard I do like again the travel and you do have some of the function keys that you need in terms of a uh, functionality you have the key the the vo the volume is uh, actually you don't have volume on this that's one of the cons also that I don't like uh, as you can see you can only have a mute button now there might be keyboard shortcuts that are available that will have volume up and down but they did have to make certain sacrifices and one of the things they removed I think from the previous generation keyboard is the volume up and down but here you do have a mute button you do have a media play key play and pause you have um, you have the keyboard backlight up and down here it's already up brightness up and down you have a uh, print screen a home and page up page down insert and delete key so again they had to make sacrifices again this is a 10.8 inch device and again as far as screen is concerned you can only fit so much into a keyboard that will be uh, symmetric with it so Overall, good keyboard, trackpad, so-so. Overall, a must-have accessory, yes. You do want to buy this. If you're getting the Surface and you want to get all that Surface functionality of being able to replace your laptop, so supposedly, or being able to use it as a tablet, take off the keyboard, gives you options, it gives you that kind of functionality, and therefore, that would be something to consider. One last thing about the keyboard is it has two fixed positions believe it or not see this bar here is a magnetic strip actually and what you do is you take the keyboard and you 
sort of click it on there, see? And it stays on there. And what it does is it gives you a typing angle, an angle, I don't know how many degrees it is, but it gives you a nice slanted typing angle, get more comfortable to type. Uh, I think that's a great feature of it. Again, it, again, magnetic strip, strip something like that, or you can do it flat. So those are your two choices, flat or angled. Nice, nice touch. Overall, the keyboard is a definite buy if you're going to get the Surface 3 and a Surface Pro for that matter. The keyboard, again, provides that extra functionality to replace, as Microsoft says, your laptop. Now, one of the other great things about the Surface 3 is the pen. Okay? And one of the things I really like is that the pen, if you click the top of the pen, it opens OneNote. And then you can just jot down notes as you uh, think of something and you want to just jot something down real quick. And you'll see here. I'm setting it up for the first time on because I had to reset the device. But say if I wanted to do a new note, uh, you add a page there, and you can just start saying, "Hello." I'm trying to do this left-handed while filming. It's not that easy, but I don't know if you can see that. But you, you again, great to have the pen. The pen really does make a difference, uh, makes it into a, a little bit more of a productivity device. Again, you could take this to meetings and you can take notes. And I think that is a added benefit. As far as what else I like about this device, I like that it has no fan. Now, I had the Surface Pro 3, I've had the Surface Pro 4, I've tested that, I've tested the Surface Book. And one thing that I've noticed that all those have in common is that they all have a fan inside. And when you try to do something processor, somewhat processor intensive, the fan will kick in. Now on the Surface Pro 3, to me, that was a problem. Surface Pro 4, the fan wasn't as bad. But with the Surface Pro 3, the fan would kick in just about any time you try to do something, try to push it a little bit, fan would kick in. And I get, I really, I just don't like that. I know you're getting more processing power, and again, you want to use the right tool for the right situation, but when that fan kicked in, it just was very annoying. Here, this is a fanless design. The Atom processor doesn't have uh, a fan, and so you're not going to hear it, and it's not going to get in the way. I just don't like to see the fan come on. That's one of the things I like about it. What are the things I don't like about this device? Well. The fact that it's that it does have lag, uh, it does have lag. It is an Atom processor, and it has this model has two gigabytes of RAM. It comes up to four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the hard drive space is another issue. This one, I believe, has 64. This is the 64 with the LTE. Without the LTE, you you can get it obviously, and you can get it in 164, and you can get it in 128. I don't believe it goes up higher than that. Um, as far as that being a problem, again, you don't want to do too much multitasking with this because you're asking a lot, especially in the two gigabyte version. If you were going to buy this, I would recommend getting the four gigabyte version. You'll get better performance out of it. And it, again, it depends on what you're looking for. Now that variant is a little bit more money and I'll, again, I'll throw the links down below so you'll see where to purchase it or check it out. But again, you can find deals on Amazon you could find them on Microsoft. They're throwing sales up all the time. So it depends on what you want to do. But again, the two gigabyte will have more lag, I believe, than the four gigabyte version. Four gigabyte will give you more multitasking ability. Now, as far as the screen is concerned, it's a 1080p screen and it uh, has very good blacks. So the blacks are very black. It's got very good brightness. Um, as you can see here, it's very good in terms of color contrast and color accuracy. And you can go, there's plenty of websites that will give you the specs regarding the um, screen here. But as you can see, it's very, very rich in color and it looks beautiful. Now, 
As far as performance is concerned, like I said, the Atom processor, the X7, is a big increase over the previous iterations used in the Surface line, not the Pro line. Let's not get confused between the Surface Pro line, which uses the core processors, the core i3, i5, i7 in the Surface Pro 3, and in the Surface Pro 4 you have the um, i5, the i7, and then they also have the Core M processor that they use uh, in the base model, which is a fanless design. And again, I want to reiterate the, the fact that this is not a pro device. This is a, um, it's a middle, I, I would say a mid-level entry device in terms of uh, productivity. Again, the Atom processor is not meant to be a speed demon, okay? It's not meant for processor intensive tasks. What it is good for is browsing the web, taking notes with the Surface Pen, uh, attaching the type cover to it, and the adjustable kickstand. Now, the kickstand has three positions, and the difference between this and the Surface Pro 4, 3 and the Surface Pro 4 is that those models have an infinite kickstand positioning, whereas this one has three levels. So you have the initial one is that level, then you go down another level, and then that's it. That's the third level. Whereas the Surface Pro 4 can go even further down, and again, you can position it in an infinite manner. You don't have to keep it in these three fixed positions as a Surface 3. Is that a pro or con? Well, the fact that it has the key, it depends. I mean, if, if you're looking for a pro model, yeah, of course the, the, the kickstand of the Surface Pro 3 and the Surface Pro 4 are better, but again, you're paying a lot more money. Okay, but with the Surface 3, you do have these three positions, and, they, and I find them adequate. I find them that they give correct viewing angles that I need for what I'm doing. Now, as far as uh, battery life, so far the uh, Surface 3 for me gets between 7 and 8 hours. I know Microsoft may advertise, up, I think, up to 10 hours or something to that effect. Again, that's not real-world use. Real-world use, I'm getting 7 to 8 hours. And again, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing processor intensive tasks, if you've got many tabs open in your browser, if you're trying to do Photoshop or edit video on Adobe Premiere, can you do it? I wouldn't do it. I mean, I think it would be um, not the right tool for that, but yeah, you can do it. So again, it depends on what you do with the device. Now, as far as ports are concerned, the Surface 3, has a different array of ports than the Surface Pro 3. Here you have a um, mini display port, you have a USB, I believe that's 3.0, micro USB charging, you have your headphone jack on that side, you have your power button, your volume rocker up and down, and bottom you have the connection for your Surface keyboard, and then here is the LTE SIM tray, and this is the AT&T variant. And it works well. Um, it works well. I don't have the SIM card in right now. Uh, maybe I'll do a video just to test the performance of the LTE, but it works good. Again, it's nice to have the ability to take it out of the environment that you're in, take it on the go, have LTE, you don't have to worry about hotspots, you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi, you're always on the go, always have connection. Now, very good for word processing on the Word or Office, Excel, it can do pretty good basic Excel stuff. Again, you can do productivity on this, but just don't expect to do Photoshop. You can do it, but do I recommend it? No. Do you want to do Adobe Premiere? No. I don't want to be editing video on this. This is not that type of machine. But what it is, is a good companion device to your main system. It's good to, get again, take it on the go, have the LTE built in, have the pen, have the keyboard. And the keyboard is backlit. So one of the things you can use this is in a dark environment. How great is that? You can type and not have to worry about not being able to see the As key. far as the sound is concerned, the Surface 3 doesn't disappoint. It does get pretty loud. The sound is uh, overall pretty good. Let's take a look at an example of uh, how the sound is on the Surface 3. Let me hit the play here. Hi everyone.
everyone, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. And this is at 100%. Video here today. today we have an unboxing of the HP NV Note 8. This is a brand new tablet that HP released. So overall, the sound is pretty good. I'm not disappointed in that at all. Um, some tablets you find the sound could be a little tinny or it could be a little bit uh, volume challenged, so to speak. Here, it gets pretty loud and it sounds pretty full. I, I think the sound is overall a nice feature of this device. So that's my overall impressions with the uh, Surface 3. Overall, the design is lightweight. I believe it's one point three pounds if I'm not mistaken I'll put up the specs uh, it has that three three point adjustable kickstand as we talked about that gives you three angles it's got no fan it has a nice bright 1080p display again that's different than the Surface Pro which has a higher resolution display of the three in the Surface Pro 3 and the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book again higher res devices it has the pen support, the Surface Pen, which you can use with OneNote, you can use it with Evernote or whatever note-taking application you like. It's also great for artists. Cons, uh, the Atom processor. Well, although it's a benefit in some ways, it could also be a con. Another con is the battery life in the sense that Microsoft says you can get up to 10 hours. I found it more to 7 to 8 hours in real life. Not bad, but again, not the advertised time that Microsoft has been touting. And again, multitasking, especially with the 2 gigabyte version of RAM, is really not enough. You really need to get the 4 gigabyte if you want to do multiple, more intensive processing tasks than the Surface 3 with the 2 gigabytes can handle. Overall, that's my impressions of the Surface 3. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would give it an, a solid 8. Uh, I think it's a device that has its place. It's between an entry-level Windows device and a higher-end Surface Pro 4 or the Surface Book. It nicely fits somewhere in the middle. And if, and if you know what you want out of this device, I, I recommend it. If you want to check it more out, uh, check out our website at amdtechreviews.com. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want to subscribe, we're more than welcome. I'd love to have you come aboard. Until next time, stay tuned for new videos coming soon. Until that time, I'll see you soon. This is Andrew from AMD Tech. Bye-bye.